Good evening, everyone. Oh, jeez. That almost scared me a little bit. Haven't done this in quite a while, sitting in front of the microphone. Um, wow. Looks like I got some explaining to do. As the majority of you have probably realized by now, or rather, haven't realized, it would be a lack of uploads from me for the past, what is it, going on three months here? And I feel like I want to address it in some way. Initially, I wanted to make this video scripted and organized with maybe gameplay in the background and a couple jokes, but I felt like such an approach would demean or reduce the amount of sincerity and seriousness I want to address in this video. For a long time, I was contemplating if whether or not I should make a video that would explain this whole situation before I left, actually. But out of my own embarrassment, I felt like I would be drawing attention to a problem. And as far as I'm concerned, sometimes things just don't need to be pointed out. But I think you all deserve at least the respect of knowing what was going on and why there's been such a lack of activity here. So I don't know if this course of action was the best or smartest idea, but I don't know if I can really go back on anything right now. So before I get anywhere, I do need to say that yes, I am okay. I appreciate anyone who's had any level of concern for me, and I'm extremely appreciative of those people who did voice those levels of concern, whether it was on Twitter and DMs or tweets, and I think I even got a comment the other day saying that I was missed. I do appreciate that level of care that you guys have for me, and I can assure you that I am totally fine. I'm not in any danger. I am mentally and physically healthy. The main reasoning why I did leave in the first place so abruptly is for both personal and creative reasons, creative and the community that I'm sort of involved with. I think the best place to start would be with my more intimate and personal matters. So roll back the clocks to my birthday of 2016, which is on the 12th of November. I just turned 19 and I had this looming dread of not going anywhere with my life. The previous year, I worked full time and I did YouTube. I was taking a year off from school after I dropped out of any ambitions of going to med school actually. It knocked the confidence out of me when I was very invested in the sciences, trying to get into internal medicine. But unfortunately, when I finally got involved, it turned out not to be the life I wanted to live for the next eight years or so, it felt. And I dropped out. I left with probably no confidence in dignity left. And I didn't even want to think about going back to school for a long time. So in that time, all I did was Work, YouTube, sleep. Work, YouTube, sleep. It was a pretty easy life, but it was enjoyable for that time. But when I turned 19, I felt like I had no direction in my life. I was fulfilling no ambitions at all. So I made it prudent to make sure I got back into school with a new career mind in set. And I did. In February of 2017, I actually returned to school in an accounting and bookkeeping course. And in fact, I'm still in that course right now and it's going very well. I'm actually starting tax law in November. Regardless of what my content looks like, I know I don't have the most high production valued content and I don't have the most laborious schedule, but it still requires a lot of time to get right and have something posted. And it was time that I thought I had. I was still going to work, I was still going to school, so I thought that maybe I could do YouTube. Clearly that wasn't the case. By May, I found myself pushing things away that had no business being pushed aside to make sure that YouTube worked. At that time, I was absolutely killing myself, trying to have two videos a week posted, trying to make sure I kept my grades up in school, and also had a good job performance. And at that point, I didn't. My grades were actually starting to slip. My job performance actually dwindled to the point where I was in danger of losing my job. 
And even though I was trying to treat YouTube as a priority, I even started having to cut corners there as well. It no longer felt like I was doing stories for a passion project, which I usually do. Rather, it felt like it was just a part of my week, like a checklist. I wasn't narrating stories that I particularly had an interest in. I was just taking anything that was thrown at me just because it was simple and easy. Obviously, my YouTube career suffered as well. And by June, I had enough. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't keep living that way. So it turned out that I needed more time. And in order to get more time, something had to be cut. I couldn't cut out school because obviously I'm trying to make something out of my life. I couldn't cut out my job because my job is what pays my bills and makes sure I have enough tuition so I can stay in school. But with YouTube, it's a hobby. A little known fact that I don't exactly mention is, I don't monetize. I have never made a dime off of YouTube. So what I had to do was I cut YouTube out. It was extremely embarrassing for me. I felt like I could handle anything. I just had to work hard. But what I was doing was killing myself essentially. Just to save myself the embarrassment, I just walked away. And here we are today. I still have my job, totally secure now. I still have that job where I deal with the whack job customers. And yes, I still see conspiracy guy from time to time. I'm still powering through school right now, but I am doing extremely well in my opinion. Truth be told, I miss narrating so much. When I first quit, I wanted to throw in the towel and never narrate again. But as time went on, I can't deny how much I love doing this and how much I missed doing it every week. I won't be able to do it the same way, doing the two videos per week, but I still want to get back into it. And as long as changes are made, you will see more from me. The pros and cons to this idea is, yes, you probably won't be seeing the same amount of content posted weekly, but you will get content that is longer, a little bit more time has been put into it, and more importantly, it will have that passion again. It won't sound so dry and unloved. And on top of it, I wasn't exactly just sitting on my laurels the whole time. I actually was working with a lot of people about starting something new. I won't say exactly what it is just yet, but if you like listening to stories, you will absolutely love what's going to be coming out soon. But I can assure you that there will be more from me in time. Just right now, I need to get back up to speed with my narrating. And more importantly, figure out how to balance narrations with school and work. So that's everything that's been going on in my life for the past year or so in regards to that and where I have been. Another reason that I mentioned was the creative side, the community side, the part that I can't exactly control, and the circumstances that sort of sap any passion I have or make me feel uncreative or unwilling to work with, and that has to do with YouTube and the horror community. Don't get me wrong, I love this community so much. I have met some of the best people in my life through this community. I have seen such beautiful projects brought forward because of these amazing, talented people, these actors, these writers, these viewers, absolutely amazing. And maybe that's why I am so angry about some things, because I'm just so passionate about it, and I hate to see it being battered and abused and dwindling the way it is. My favorite kind of narrations to listen to, or my favorite ones I like to produce, are simple stories. I don't care if they're real. I don't care if they're short, long, grotesque, clean. I don't care. I love stories for what they are. Stories. An escape from reality and immersing yourself in the creation of another person. But that doesn't feel like it's valued anymore. What is the most common type of video you see right now from your favorite narrators? I know there are some exceptions to the book, but in most cases, they're either A, Reddit stories, B, long stories that are just a bunch of short stories put together, or C, some sort of story that is claiming to be real. 
Why do people do this? Why do you see so many of these videos? Because they're popular. People like them. No shame to you if you like watching these videos and no shame if you like reading them. Hey, I just said I don't like them and I prefer fantasy stories. And apparently a lot of people don't like those. Don't worry about it. I have weird likes too. But because they're so popular and it is the most common denominator right now, you feel a high sense of pressure to do them if you want to make it big, which the majority of us want to do. Hell, I've done them too. I call these videos that I've done that follow these trends bandwagon videos. Why? Because I'm not doing them for any other purpose than trying to jump on a bandwagon. And frankly, I hate those videos. My most recent, most popular video fell right into this direction. Several stories combined into one based on real encounters. That was the seven Ouija board stories. Yes, it was popular, but was I happy with it? No. I felt like I was just doing something because people wanted it. And also, I have some pretty personal opinions on the Ouija board, so I was extremely uncomfortable the whole time I was making that video. Yes, it did well. But at the end of the day, I hated it. And then when I try and do videos that I do have passion in, like the fantasy stories, they get nothing. So it's a little hard to keep pushing forward knowing that your passion or what you're interested in isn't exactly appreciated. Again, no shame to you if you like these stories or your creator who likes narrating these kinds of stories. I understand the appeal behind them. There is something more terrifying knowing that it happened. But when I narrate these types of stories, I don't feel like I'm telling a story in the usual sense. I feel like I'm a news anchor reciting the news of this tragic event. That's not to say that I totally dislike this idea. That's why I birthed Realities of Horror. So I could do videos like that, but look at it at more of a fact-based, analytical style. So if it is true, let's prove that it's true and actually recite the story from not a dramatic side, but from a blunt side of things. Not embellished by creative writing skills, but rather based on news reports and police witnesses. Again, I can't hold anybody to task about this because I have participated in everything I've mentioned. I have done the quote unquote real stories. I have done the Reddit stories. I don't know why they're more popular. I don't know what makes a horror story different because it comes from Reddit, but they do work for me on some level. There are plenty of Reddit stories that are just stories at the end of the day, which I'm totally fine with. And that's why I enjoy doing them. My biggest gripe is with these videos that are multiple stories combined into one. People do them because YouTube analytics favor videos with plenty of watch time. Either A, you can make a short video and pray that it gets tons of views, or B, you can make a longer video and hope that less people watch, but they make it all the way to the end. Now typically, if you are a person who likes to sit down and listen to a big long story once a day or binge watch your favorite narrator, typically that means you have a good attention span. You are able to sit down and digest a lot of information at once for a long period of sitting. Unlike most YouTube genres like Let's Players, Vloggers, or Do It Yourself, typically these videos need to be shorter, as those audiences need quick and very spontaneous amounts of entertainment so they can move on. But for us, you are the perfect type of audience, because you are fine sitting down and listening to a video for maybe an hour. However, finding hour-long stories is sometimes a bit tedious. There's also plenty of stories you can find that you love, but you don't want to make a 5-7 to seven minute video. But you found another story the other day that's sort of like it, and another one. So why not combine all those stories into one video? So instead of having 3 7 minute videos, you could have one 21 minute video. It works perfect for you. However, the longer the video, the more work that has to go into it. Posting consistently and regularly on YouTube is also beyond important. And it's very hard sometimes to post consistent content over and over and over again if they're incredibly long videos with high amounts of editing. Enter the collaboration. 
I'm going to be using that term a little bit loosely for the time being, so picture it with quotation marks every time I say it for now. Collaborations are extremely important to growing. Not only are you able to be featured on another channel, but you have the chance to be exposed to a larger audience. Perhaps you'll get more traffic than you're used to. You have the opportunity to be in front of the larger audience, more feedback and comments than maybe you're used to. You get the promotion, and the other person not only gets to have a new voice on their channel, but they get an easier video at the end of the day. Granted, sometimes collaborations can be a lot more work because of the organization and leadership qualities you have to have, but the video at the end of the day is a little bit simpler because you have help. However, there are some people who use and abuse this fact a little too well. I know this may piss some people off by me saying this, but it is a fact that has happened in the past and it still happens. Perhaps you don't think this way and you have hosted events like this. That's great. Good for you. I'm not talking to you then. There are just some other people that I am looking at in particular. It is human nature to want to be appreciated, wanted, liked, and popular. And there's some people who are willing to do anything at any cost to get what they want, whether it's because of ambition or because they don't know how to react when they're in a community that's sort of being punched over and over and over again by the same platform that they're providing for. So they want that longer video. They want that proper content, but they don't want to post 50 videos into one. So they employ the help of others in this really open and inviting way. I'm hosting a collaboration. Come join me. All you have to do is post a whole freaking story. You know, one story that you can maybe put onto your own channel and just pretend like normal. No, give that to me and I'll combine you with a bunch of other people. Collaborations are about helping each other. This is not helping. Combining a bunch of people into one slot isn't helping. That is featuring people, showing off people. If you want to collaborate with someone, have this person voice this character, have yourself narrate the story, and then have this person narrate that character along the line. If you want to feature someone, feature them alone. Have them narrate their story, post it on your channel, and put the spotlight on them. Show off this amazing, raw, talented guest that you have. If you are someone who doesn't do this, you just like having lots of people in one video and you're happy to share the glory with everyone, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people who are intentionally using everybody to their advantage at the end of the day. Remember, the more people in these videos, the more promotion it's going to get. Every single person involved in that video is going to be promoting the crap out of it. But who are they all directing everybody towards? That channel that it was initially posted on. It's not a win-win at the end of the day. It is a win for some and a loss for most. <sighs> if you've gotten this far in the video, I do want to thank you for hearing me out as I vent my heart out. Truly, I do get frustrated when I'm passionate about something. And like I said before, I am so passionate about this community and I hate the way it's being treated by some people. In conclusion, the reason why I left was because I was busy, unable to hold everything up at once. I felt guilty for not being able to perform well due to my own self-deprecation. I felt like the content I enjoy is underappreciated, but now is not the time for that. I have ignored from here on out any doubts I have about the content I make because I have over 600 wonderful people like you who do appreciate the content I make. From here on out, it's only going to be about me, you, and the passion we all share for stories and literature. Thank you once again for everyone's concern and more importantly, sticking with me through this wild crazy journey that I call YouTube. I cannot wait to get back into narrating and of course do keep your eyes out for the new project because I know that each and every one of you who loves stories will love it too. I am Dr. Moxmo and I will see you in the next video.